This is a summary of the very famous speech called How to Become a Millionaire by J. Earl Shoff, who happens to be the great Jim Rohn's mentor. Earl Shoff said that there are basic laws in this universe that we are governed by, and they work for us. Earl Shoff went on to cover a couple of these laws just to assist us in knowing why these things happen. For example, everybody is aware of the law of gravitation. Now, we do not know how it works, but we know it works. It works for everybody. It doesn't matter whether you are a saint or whether you are the opposite of a saint. So basically, it doesn't matter whether you are good or bad. If you use the law of gravity wrong, you are going to suffer. The law of electricity works for all of us. You can burn your house down with electricity or you can light your home with it. The law of electricity will work for you. We have laws of success, we have laws of poverty, we have laws of lack. We have laws of hate, we have laws of love, we have laws of peace. All of these are basic laws, and we use them rightfully. Wonderful things will happen to us. If we use them wrong, then we get ourselves in trouble. Girl Shof states that you can have anything in this world you want to have, and you can be anything in this world you want to be. And it's simple. The first thing that we want to become aware of, we're going to plant seeds, and it seems that we plant the seeds we're going to reap. Now we are all aware that if you plant a tomato, you are not going to get cucumbers, you're going to get tomatoes. And when you plant a seed in the earth, you must plant it properly. And if you do not plant properly, you will not have the harvest. Now, one of the major problems in our country today, we want to rip harvest, but we do not want to take the time to plant. Now, the planting of the seed and the earth is basically and absolutely the same process that you use in the mental world. We are born with a conscious mind and a subconscious mind. Earl Shoff states that where most people are making a mistake as they set their goals down, they say, they say, well, what is your goal? write them down, I want a car, well, a house, I want some money. And this is the way they set their goals. If we had a whole group of seeds, let's take apple seeds. We had 50 different types of apple seeds and we just grabbed any one of them as that. We throw them in the ground, when the tree grows, we get beautiful green apples, but you say no, I wanted red apples. We always have to be specific about what you want out of life. If you don't know where you are going, how will you get there? If you want red apples, then say it. If you want green apples, then by all means be specific. People say this all the time. They say, I want to be rich. Well, the question is, what does being rich mean to you? To some people, $2,000 is being rich, and for some, it's $2 million, and for other people, it's not even about the money. You have to start learning to be specific. If your goal is to be a millionaire, that start with a figure. I want to have a million dollars. It's the start. It's being specific. It's being intentional. We're always visualizing things in our lives, but our tendency is to visualize negative situations. Now, the reason for visualizing negative situations is because we are living in a negative world, and we have to be clear about that. If you know anything about gardening, you realize that it takes a lot to grow a plant. You have to do a lot to prepare the soil, get some fertilizers, get the right amount of sunlight and shade, water it each day, and so on. But for the weeds, now that's another matter altogether. The weeds don't need anything to grow, they grow everywhere and anywhere. In fact, you have to spend a lot of time and resources to get rid of them. You pull them out so the plants you want can grow. That's exactly how it is with positive and negative thoughts. You have to intentionally get rid of the weeds and focus on getting all the nutrients to the plant, which is the positive thought. When you ask a friend how they feel, and if they feel good, they probably tell you, I'm good. But when they feel bad, they will spend a lot of time telling you how bad they feel. It would seem we are so good at describing bad things and all the negative feelings that come with that. How can people when they feel good just say, I feel great, I feel wonderful. People like negative things, they seem to vibrate with them for some strange reason. They don't want things that are negative in their life, but they keep insisting I'm talking about them, and they can paint the most beautiful picture of lack and negativity. We are creators, and everything that you have in your life is exactly what you designed. The dress you wear, the house you live in, the car you drive, the life and career you have. 
So don't blame anyone for the things you are attracting. Everything you are is what you are attracting. This, this a very strong point that I would have to repeat it. Everything you are is what you are attracting. You see everything that you have is the things that you created. So be careful about what you create. Too many people stop their dreams because they start thinking about the things that are not necessary in order to have them. Earl Schof stated that he said to somebody, do you want a new Cadillac? And the person replied, yes, I want one, but I can't afford it. It has nothing to do with affording it. I just want to know what you really want. Articulate your wants. It's the first step. There are many wonderful things that can happen to you, and these things can come from very unusual sources. Many wonderful things can happen to you if you believe in the process that I'm talking about. Speaking about this extensively, Earl said, I never owned a Cadillac in my life, and I defined exactly what I wanted, down till the rims, and the end result was I had me a red Cadillac convertible and my income increased to a point where it cost me nothing. This is visualizing, this is a positive attitude towards the things you want. I say to somebody, I say, do you want a new Cadillac? Well, I want one, but I can't afford it. I said that has nothing to do with affording it at this minute. I just want to know what you really want. Most people are afraid to define what they want in life. They're afraid to define it. They're afraid it's going to cost them something so you don't have to worry about the income or how to achieve what you want. I'm just talking about a principle. Now, what would you like to have? This is the way people set their dreams. They just say, I want a Cadillac. Do you want an orange one, the green one? The best thing to do is to get a piece of paper and start defining on a piece of paper. A 1962 Cadillac, a red Cadillac convertible. Try to be as specific as you can be. Now can have any kind of car you want. When you write it, you start seeing it. This is how you define the things that you want in this world. So when you get it all defined, when you get that Cadillac completely defined in his mind, you have got the seed and you need to plant it. The specific idea is the seed. Now you need to plant it. Now, the important thing is that you must release that seed. You must release it and it must be planted. And the finest thing in the world to plant that seed is to take on this piece of paper now and just write across that. Thank you. That's the law of acceptance. And you would be amazed how many people in this world can accept their good. Thank you means that I have accepted it. I'm going to have it. I know it's mine. And then you take and fold this piece of paper out. With your dream, your desire, you put it away, put it underneath a tablecloth someplace, or put it in a drawer or someplace. Carry it around and don't take it out. Look at it anymore. And so you do not at that time say how, when, or where. All you do is say thank you, because you know it's on its way. Now how would you act if you really and truly wanted a red Cadillac convertible, if you really and truly wanted one? It was a strong desire in your life and you knew it was on its way. How would you act? If you truly know your desires are on their way, you know it's almost here. You to walk taller. You look taller. You'll be happier. You'll be positive. You'll be more everything. This automatically creates a positive attitude because it's a life expectancy. Good things are going to happen. You have planted seeds properly and they are working themselves to you. You can have anything in this world you want to have and you can be anything in this world you want to be. By using this simple process, there is absolutely no way you can keep success from your door if you will follow the basic, simple little process that I've just described. What would you like to be? What type of person would you like to be? Would you like to have more love in your life? Well, then you must learn to give love. You'll never have anything without giving. Everything I give, I receive back multiplied. If I have a lot of hate in my life, I'm giving hate out. And so if I don't want hate coming into my life, I should not be giving it out. Take A Ways from How to Become a Millionaire by J. Earl Shof. You have to keep feeding your subconscious mind with positivity. Training your subconscious mind positively involves consistent practices that promote optimism, confidence, and resilience. Here are some practical ways to train your subconscious mind positively and reduce doubt. 1. Affirmations. Regularly affirm positive statements about yourself, your abilities, and your goals. Repeat these affirmations aloud or silently, focusing on them with conviction. For example, I am capable of overcoming challenges, or I believe in my ability to succeed. 2. Visualization. Visualize yourself achieving your goals and living your desired life.
Imagine the details vividly, engaging all your senses. Visualization helps imprint positive images in your subconscious mind, making them feel more attainable. Three, gratitude practice. Cultivate a daily gratitude practice where you consciously acknowledge and appreciate the good things in your life. This trains your mind to focus on the positive aspects, fostering a more optimistic outlook. 4. Mindfulness Meditation Practice mindfulness meditation to observe your thoughts without judgment and develop awareness of the present moment. This practice can help you detach from negative thought patterns including doubts and cultivate a more peaceful state of mind. 5. Reframe negative thoughts. Whenever you notice negative or doubtful thoughts arising, challenge them with more empowering perspectives. Reframe negative self-talk into positive affirmations and constructive statements. For example, replace I can't do this with I am learning and growing with each step I take. 6. Set realistic goals. Break down your goals into manageable tasks and set realistic timelines. Achieving smaller milestones builds confidence and reinforces positive beliefs in your abilities. 7. Surround yourself with positivity. Surround yourself with supportive and positive influences, including friends, mentors, and uplifting content. Limit exposure to negativity, whether it's from people, news, or social media. 8. Self-compassion. Practice self-compassion by treating yourself with kindness and understanding, especially when facing challenges or setbacks. Remember that it's normal to experience doubts and setbacks on your journey, and treat yourself with the same kindness you would offer to a friend. 9. Repetition and consistency. Consistency is key to reprogramming your subconscious mind. Engage in these practices regularly, preferably daily, to reinforce positive beliefs and override negative patterns. 10. Professional help. If doubts persist despite your efforts, consider seeking support from a therapist or counselor. They can provide personalized guidance and techniques to address deeper-rooted issues and support your journey towards a more positive mindset. By incorporating these practices into your daily life and consistently reinforcing positive beliefs, you can train your subconscious mind to focus on possibilities rather than doubts, leading to greater confidence and resilience. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and leave a comment on the next book or speech you would like us to summarize and animate.